my name is Pat Colnam with the Leading Edge Group. Um, we've been, Leading Edge Group has been supporting on post over the last number of years in create, creating a sustainable culture of continuous improvement. This was built on an educated and empowered workforce. And we use targeted continuous improvement initiatives to streamline and improve the processes and increase the efficiencies at UNPOST. So since 2005, we've delivered on many UNPOST projects. So we designed improved plant layouts and automation of the parcels process. Um, we did automation of the letters process, conducted mail flows and layouts, and conducted a continuous improvement maturity model assessment on mail processing in Dublin. And this identified the main structure and framework for a potential lean transform. So this gives you an example of some of the long-term trusted partner approach we take with all of our clients. Over the last two years, I've had the pleasure of working with UNPOS and program managing some of the following initiatives with a fantastic team, uh, one or two of whom I see are on the call today. So lean in the back office functions with team member Brian Cody, efficiency in the mail centers, 5S and HR, lean greenbelt training. We supported the development of the UNPOST way, which David will talk to you about. And we supported the rollout of lean, um, starting with the peak 2019 operational plan, which included the yard management process, production and delivery planning process, bringing lean into the parcels piece of the business and deploying 5S visual management and daily management. So hopefully you can uh, see my screen uh, now. So I'll just start sharing, share screen and give you a quick overview, a couple of quick slides. I won't take too long because the, the main event will be David Murray from UNPOS coming up now. So just a little bit of background on the Leading Edge Group. So we've supported some of the largest transforms in Ireland. And you can see an example there, what I was saying of the typical, uh, the length of time that we're involved with companies. So we like to develop that trusted partner approach so that we can help companies solve their business problems. And we're still working with most of our clients. Our typical engagement is about 100 to 500 days. So we've been working with them since 2005. The particular challenge that uh, Dave will be talking to you about today was the increase in parcel volumes. So this was um, targeted last year ahead of COVID uh, for the Christmas period. So peak challenge every Christmas comes with significant volumes were forecasted for 2019, 2020. And so we looked at this in four, in four ways. We said the first thing we do is do value stream mapping. So we reviewed the entire delivery network across the country, including the parcel sorting centers, the trucks and the delivery service units countrywide. Then we looked at the capacity and demand model. So we're reviewing all the available capacity across the network, both locally and including transport, and overlaid this with the predicted demand and identified the bottlenecks requiring action. Thirdly, we put together with UNPOST a comprehensive KPI and performance improvement model. So ensure that the KPIs used would inform the business and that the performance improvements were aligned with those targets. And then lastly, put in a multi-level cross-functional review process, implementing a weekly cadence of project reviews and readiness analysis several months before peak arrived. So um, a stitch in time, as they say, was the approach. So how do we approach the project? So at Leading Edge, um, we have a project approach used, which was based on our Lean Transform program methodology. And we talked about, we would base it on the organization strategy and vision, and then focus on the governance, make it happen, capability, tools, and measure. And Dave will talk about how that was deployed at UNPOS, because you can't just copy and paste the same approach for every client. You know, uh, different problems require different approaches, but these five pillars are something that have to be done in any um, major improvement program that you're working on. So we supported um, the UNPOS project in the following ways. The first thing we did was we defined the big picture. So looking at the 2019 business plan in terms of what were the target sectors, what was the growth, um, where which customer groups, um, 
And then secondly, to commence the 2019 peak plan early. So this would involve engaging with key customers of Unpost, defining the volumes they were expecting, including the size of the package. As you all know, um, all, the packets can be large or small, depending on what you're ordering. We conduct a different scenario modeling based on the target volume growth forecast and determine the best operational model. And this had to allow for all of those packets and parcels fitting in the back of the van that's delivering to you or being processed through the delivery service, your local delivery service unit. Once we had that done, we worked with Unpost to get the basics in place. So introducing demand planning capability across the organization, implemented a KPI dashboard and appropriate management review process, and then worked to fine tune and activate several enhancements to drive increased efficiencies. So this meant starting early, and I'm a big advocate of that. So start almost a little early and try and pilot out the solutions rather than assuming you have the perfect solution in theory and then hoping it'll work in practice. Get it out there, start using it and refine it. So when the pressure comes on, you're able to succeed. So with Unpos, we agreed an operational peak plan which was focused on high customer service performance. So that was getting you your package or parcel uh, when we when you were supposed to be there. Looking at the demand and capacity alignment, including the resourcing requirements needed for that. Working on the end-to-end -end flow coordination because um, we have to unpost as they're getting the product out across the network have to bring empty cages and boxes back. And that's a key component, very simple thing, but a very key component to the whole process. And then lastly, develop some visual KPI-based management process. And this was based on the plan, do, check, act approach. So our plan, do, check, adjust approach. So, which many of you are familiar with, whereby you're looking at how are we performing on our KPIs? What are we going to do to improve that? What's we try that out, see did it impact the KPIs the way we want it. If not, we act again, say what's the next one step that we're going to take. And from a project management point of view, what type of supports do we offer on POST? And what would we typically offer um, a, a client in a transform program? So first off, weekly program management and RAG status based on our cloud-based application Citric Cube. Uh, second of all, issues were escalated as they arose, so no surprises was a key component and making sure that they're escalated early enough to be addressed. Thirdly, monthly reporting on consultant usage and time expended, so there was complete transparency and no surprises. And then facilitated the change through doing, so not PowerPointing, or you can't PowerPoint your way through that kind of an increase in business. You have to actually go and do something. And so that was a key thing that we did was working with the Unpost staff to change the way of doing the operations and coaching and mentoring with them along with their appointed lean coordinators under Dave Murray's group. Then we would have progress meetings with our engagement partner, David Murray and uh, other senior executives at Unpost. And we had work stream leads appointed that would manage the different components of the program. Um, no, no one person uh, can pull this off. It's a huge team effort. And so from our point of view, we would have worked stream leads appointed. And David's point of view, he would have had uh, partners on the on-post side that would work directly with them. So there's just a quick screenshot of uh, Citric Cube, uh, our so uh, online uh, web-based system for tracking um, project return and project status. And without further ado, what I will do is I will hand you over to David Murray and let him talk to you about the challenges and successes they had at Unpost. So I'll stop sharing there now, David. Okay. You. To me now. Share this. Share. Presentation mode. Is that up there now? Yep, you can see. Brilliant. All right. 
Um, yeah, Dave, David Murray is my name. Um, I'm, I'm the head of uh, Mail's operational and operation excellence at Unpost. Um, and I'm just going to just give you just an overview of, of how we use lean management to do our peak planning for our, you know, for our volumes in, in 2019. I suppose on Post, um, we're a business, you know, we're, we're transitioning from being a traditional letter business uh, that carries parcels to, to a parcel business that carries letters. Uh, and it comes with huge challenges. Um, the product is a lot bigger, a lot bulkier, and it really puts strain on our infrastructure. Um, in 2019, you know, our customers were making aware of this phenomenal growth uh, that was coming at them. Uh, they were giving us forecasts where we were seeing, you know, two and three X on the previous year. Uh, and when we were starting to map that out, we understood that, look, there was a massive challenge for us to grow with our customers uh, and to be able to put in the infrastructure to meet their demands. Uh, like the challenge for us really was to make sure we had and what we were calling it, it was a, a significant peak step change. You know, what we did in 20, 2018, we knew if we were to take the same approach in 2019, that just, that just would not work. Um, the, the, the infrastructure, the way we managed just would not uh, deliver the product that we were getting forecasted by our customers. Um, what we do every year is we run a post-mortem and it's called, it's called an, an after action review. Uh, and we carried this out in 2019 and uh, Q1. And look, it, it's warts and all. We, it, it's very open. We go around all the different departments. We, we really get into, you know, what went well. Uh, and in our language, we go, well, what went, what went not so well. Um, and look, there's always room for improvement. Uh, and that's what we look at. Uh, so we, we really, you know, put our, really got into this and understood, well, where, where, what do we need to do? What do we need to change if we're going to meet our customer demand uh, for 2019? So at that point in time, you know, we, we went outside and said, look, we're going we're gonna to get additional support in to help us with this. Uh, and we asked for Leading Edge to come in uh, to help us and, and develop a, you know, a peak plan for us for 2019. Uh, and it all started, I suppose, when we mapped out, when we had a, a review with Leading Edge on, on our after action review, we sat down and we started to build up our, you know, our value stream map. And that was really just to see, look, look what is the as is? What is the current as is? end to end with an unpost, right from the point that we receive a forecast, right up to the point where we actually hand the product over to a customer. Um, you know, we examined what, what we call the growth pillars, who are our big customers, um, what type of forecast were they giving us, um, and how would that impact on our, on our infrastructure? Uh, like one, of, one of the key things that we talked about is the volume metrics. Um, at Christmas time, the volume metrics change dramatically within the business. Uh, where people tend to buy larger, bulkier Christmas presents. So you're talking the bikes, you're talking the, 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 you know, the accordions, the pianos, the big toys. Um, and they, they really do stretch our infrastructure. Um, you know, we, we mapped out what, what are all our critical constraints in terms of floor space, vans, buildings, people, transport networks, loading bays. Uh, right the way through, and that was all done through Gemba walks, understanding you know what our current capacity is uh, and how does that meet our, our future demand. We also went through very much in detail what how we delivered in, in, in 2018 and where the gaps were, what the model was, and really got a good understanding of that. Um, and a lot of effort went into understanding you know where we were in terms of our of our delivery performance, what was the new standard that our customers were expecting from us. And how are we going to achieve that? I suppose the, the, one of the, the critical tools that we used was, you know, we did a, a national value stream map. Uh, and that was a complete end-to-end -end process. And, and what it did, like it, it fully gave us that ability to understand where all the constraints were, uh, where all the potential bottlenecks were. And we went down to all the detail in terms of understanding the, you know, the cycle time, uh, the tack time for each of the operations, um, the travel time between buildings, you know, the full operational capacity of each of our processing centres. Uh, and plus, and plus had 120 delivery, delivery service units nationally, uh, and we also have six processing centres. So it was to fully understand, you know, the whole fleet of vehicles, the fleet of vans, how everything marries up uh, and how we match all of that. Um, and we really got into understanding you know, what is the current state and, and, you know, and identifying what do we need to do when we map out what, what the future state is going to look like 
Um, and that was what it was. It was taking our as is current state process map and developing our future state process map. I suppose a significant change that we made for, for 2019 is we deployed a, a, an automated parcel sorting machine in, in, in the DPH. And like this is really sort of the, the, heart, of the heart of the operation. Uh, and what was critical here was, was to make sure that the, the inflows into this operation were balanced uh, and also the outflows as well. Uh, and to make sure that you know, we weren't, weren't impacting on the, the capability and the capacity of the equipment, that we had everything aligned. Um, people think that's simple. It's actually quite difficult to do, to marry everything up. Um, you know, we're talking high volume product here, uh, to manage all the trucks arriving sequenced, you know, to get them offloaded, to get the product through the machine, to get them off again, keep it in FIFO, keep it in sequence, and get it back down to the trucks and away and get it delivered. Uh, it took a huge amount of work, and I suppose Leading Edge were fundamental in developing that plan with us. One of the one of the, the key things we did is we you know we 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 introduced um, you know plan do check act uh, really as, as sort of the main methodology for for managing the business uh, during during the peak, and we and we overlaid the whole plan do me, plan do check act methodology on top of our future state map. Uh, and what was required here was that, you know, we had our metrics and they were managed daily, weekly, monthly, and they all rolled up. And what it did, it made it very transparent um, in terms of how the business was performing. And we really were able to take, you know, the, the pulse of the operation, uh, hourly, daily, weekly. You know, we were managing the customer forecasts. You know, we were seeing where we were against the demand. And um, we were understanding exactly where we were in terms of arrival profiles. Um, and that, look, it was fundamental having that in place. And again, just everybody understood it. Everybody understood, understood what metrics they needed to report on. Um, and again, it just rolled up so that it was very transparent. Like one thing we had to do was, was, was really engage with, with our frontline staff. Um, and, you know, Leading Edge helped us develop what we call the Unpost Way. Um, this, is, this is used by a lot of companies to, the Toyota Way model would be one that we're all familiar with. Um, you know, we, we, we developed what this program was going to be. We started with our own executive team. We took them through it. We took our unions through it as well, who, who very much bought into the program as well. Um, we then took our frontline management through it. And then we took our, our, our own operators through it, really to explain to them what, what, would, what it all was about. Um, and it's about these five pillars. It's the five pillars of, of operational excellence. You're talking about governance, you know, making sure that the, we had the right structures in place, making sure that we had the right sponsorship in place, uh, and that everybody understood what it was and, and bought into it. Um, a lot of effort went into making sure that the, the correct capability was there in terms of training. Um, we, we've had Six Sigma training previously within Unpost, and we built upon that. Uh, and we had the, the staff there that, you know, they, 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 they understood it, and we were able to bring them up to speed quite quickly. Uh, we deployed full-time lean coordinators onto these sites to really drive the program on site, you know, and they, they, were, they were fundamental in actually driving the improvements into the business. Um, the tools that we used, you know, visual management was key in this. Um, we put visual management boards in, in key areas. We spent a bit of time understanding what KPIs do we really want to manage. We didn't overcomplicate it in terms of putting too many KPIs up. We, we simplified them. Uh, safety was always the first one that we put up. Um, and that, that's the way we started every huddle that we had uh, at the start of a shift. We would always discuss safety first. And that really, I think the operators themselves really bought into that, that we'd always talk about safety first, you know, make sure that everybody that came to work, left work in a safe environment, and were able to operate. And one thing that we noticed that like slips, trips and falls, there was a dramatic decrease in slips, trips and falls within the operation. Uh, and, and absenteeism came down due to that. Um, we have some key, key metrics, we simplified some of our key metrics, uh, effective cost per box, effective labour cost per box was one, probably the key metric that we used. Uh, and we explained this to the operators themselves, this is what we're trying to drive down. Uh, and we saw a 25% reduction in effective labour cost per box just by implementing Lean. Uh, and by sharing this though with, with the operators themselves. We had these, as I said, we have these daily huddles uh, at the start of each shift, um, and people would, you know, people would make an effort to be there on time to get a good place at this. Uh, and what we were doing is we were really 
engaging the frontline management had now had the opportunity to to really engage with the staff um, and and you could see this this spirit and the culture change completely when when the staff themselves felt that they had an opportunity to, to you know to, to give feedback um, and there was there was discussions on how we performed the previous day we would talk to who the big customers were coming in that day where they were in terms of volumes um, it was an open forum very much where people could you know, they could express their ideas, they could express if there was an opportunity for improvement, uh, they were always taken on board. Uh, the, lean co the lean coordinators would always be part of these huddles. And if someone was making a suggestion, you know, they, they'd talk to the lean coordinator and we would implement what we call A3 improvements. And they're just quick improvements that we could make into the operation. And it was all there to, you know, to drive improvement into the business. Um, you know, the targets, we, had, we set targets and every day you could see it was people were motivated. They were really motivated to try and beat these targets. They wanted to run the machine longer to try and you know to crack a number that they thought they couldn't achieve. Uh, and it's, it was it's a, it was a different culture that we saw. All of a sudden, we could see the business really really striving to 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 to, to really push themselves. And um, like one of the key tools that we had was was standard work, um, and standard work really just simplified the processes. You know, we mapped out exactly how we wanted the, the process to perform. Uh, we trained up everybody up on that. We trained our our, our, our frontline management, you know, so that they could they could take a visual look at it to make sure that, that their operation was being followed. And um, when we trained up our people, it was a lot easier to train them having standard work. And when we wanted to ramp up the operation as well and scale it up, and uh, the tools were in place there that we could, you know, we could we could bring people in, get them trained up very quickly, and we could manage it very easily as well. Standard work was applied right, right from end to end. So when you're talking about taking the forecast, how we plan the trucks coming off, you know, from the ferries to how we schedule them through, uh, sequence them through the operation, offloaded them, all done through standard work. Uh, we even got it down to how we, how we even dealt with the, with the waste product uh, and taking it away from the operation. All, there was standard work put in for all of those operations. I so suppose this is this was the the big challenge and it's what we call managing the twin peaks uh christmas peak 2019 it was look it was a very successful peak for for on post um, in terms of volumes it was the, it was record volumes and uh, our quality of service improved dramatically and customers the customers were really 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 happy with, with our performance and um, the way it normally works is that you know we get through christmas we get out we get out of christmas we take a breath and then there's a there's a small hangover when we get to do the, when the sales kick in, and that runs through January. And um, this year, all of a sudden, we the COVID kicked in, and we were asked to go again. Uh, and and the systems and the and the mechanisms that we put in place uh, for the Christmas peak, they all just kicked back in again. Uh, and the volumes the volumes have come dramatically at us now uh, since week twelve. And as you know, as COVID was in place and people were locked down, and people really have embraced this online shopping. And the volumes have just dramatically increased, and it has it has stretched our operation dramatically. Um, in terms of our infrastructure, you know, we're trying to understand where where is this new base now? Because we we would normally be well into planning now for the peak that's coming at us this year. But we're now trying to understand how much of this new base is going to remain. How much of, you know, how how far has online shopping remained with us, uh, and what we what we plan on now for for. Uh, for the coming for the coming peak, uh, and we also need to be cognizant that you know we're trying to manage all of this with, with social distancing in place. So capacity also in terms of space has been reduced, but it's a huge challenge. And look, it's one that we're really looking forward to as well. Mm. Really, that's it. So thank you very much. I hope that just gives you a good overview of of how we went about it. Um, look, lean lean has been a really a real benefit to Unpost. Um, it has definitely changed the culture within the operation uh, and changed the way we, we tackle each peak. So, oh, David, there was, a, there was a question. There's just one or two questions after coming in, unless Senan has received any others separately. But there's one there from uh, Andras asking, how did you go about forecasting the upcoming demand? His question is, was it based on running average or historical trend curves? Or um, in your case, was it the demand that you're looking at is, is more customer based? So 
how did you go about uh, forecasting the demand for the following year, excluding COVID? Yeah. So yeah, I suppose like at every like we would pick our our top customers, and um, so we have a number of contract customers. Um, and we'd go out to them early on in the year, and we'd say, uh, we'd ask them for their forecast. So all the all the big the big contract suppliers to us would would have a forecast. We'd map that forecast against you know where we are against the demand, and you know we 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 would work our way through that. And um, we take you know whether that's seventy or eighty percent of our top big customers, um, and that, and we get a very good understanding of that. Uh, but we're also looking historically back as to what have they delivered in the past as well. Uh, so there is a bit of trend analysis to see exactly where they are against the forecast. Yeah, well, there's some nice comments saying thanks to all the impost management and uh, post operatives for what they've done throughout COVID. And uh, there's a question related to that there as well from Joe is this, what specific operational impacts will COVID-19 have on the business and how can Lean help in the, in the current environment? Um, I suppose the, the big challenge for us is understanding, you know, how much of this new growth is going to remain. Um, you know, we, we've seen phenomenal growth over the last couple of months. And I suppose I walked Henry Street there the other day and I've noticed there's still a lot of shops that still haven't opened up. Um, so we're kind of wondering how, how far have people migrated onto online shopping? Uh, and will, are, are we going to have to set a new base for ourselves? Um, you know, we, we, we were planning on you know, where we would be at the end of 2020. Our understanding now is we may have jumped to 2022 forecasts. Yeah. That's there the type of volumes we're trying to, trying to deal with now. So now we're trying to manage, you know, we're trying to do 2020, 2022 volumes with 2020 infrastructure, right? Yeah. So we're now trying to, to ramp that up and try and play, we're playing catch up at the moment. How do we put the infrastructure in place now? To, 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 the challenge is to, to meet this new demand and to yeah, understand yeah. what this new base is going to be. But the, lean, the lean is there now, the lean is there and, and the mechanisms are there now. Um, you know, we, we have those in place, so it's building on those as well. Yeah, and I think you've done a fantastic job of leveraging what you put in place for the peak with the, you know, the KPIs, the measures, the plan, do, check, act, daily, weekly, monthly management system, along with the capacity that you released by getting people engaged. Even outside of like buying machines and equipment, just getting your staff so engaged in the process and, and showing them the metrics and involving them in improving the safety released, released capacity because uh, people were more involved in the game, I think, as well for you, David. And you were hey, look, look, yeah. People like people, they enjoyed it. I, I've never, it's, it's one of these things where it had a, an air of excitement about it. Um, you know, you were seeing new customers coming on board. Uh, you were seeing very familiar products. Uh, people were, you could see them picking the product up and going, God, I recognize that customer. Um, yeah. they, 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 they kind of, you could see this, the speed of which that the operation was, was working at. You know, there was, there was a great pace to it. Uh, and I think when you see an operation run, and, and just even by the sound of it, the sound of product has gone on and off at trucks, he knew that the, the operation was humming at the time. Yeah. And I, I think there was a question in from Seamus there around it, and you probably addressed a lot of it there, but he was asking about, you know, you plan for a big increase at, at Christmas at peak, and then you managed to get a half a year of increase, basically as a surprise present after Christmas for yourselves. And, and what was that like for the people that were there? You know, did it put a lot of pressure on, on people or... I mean, obviously it does, but at the same time, like my observation is I, I, the people just seem to be more motivated once they understood, you know, how what they did every day impacted on the game. Kind of like you were saying about they were new. Oh, I know where that package is going or, you know, that type of package. Like, So what yeah. was it like for the people, for the people. You know, living through that? Your staff? Look, look, yeah, look, look, look. look um like people on a post and, you know, your, your postman, look, they take great pride in, in what they do. And, you know, they, they really do feel they're, they're, that it is part of the national infrastructure. Um, you know, when you go down to rural Ireland, the services they provide and the additional services that they did provide in terms of, you know, calling into the elderly, yeah. uh, the newspaper service. And, um, you know, you're talking about collecting prescriptions for people, people that were, you know, we're isolating, you know, they were able to leave a note in, the, in, in, their, in their window and the postman would go in 
collect, you know, collect, they'd be given a note, they go down and they were doing groceries. So it was all the additional, you know, add-ons that they were doing and helping out. Um, and they did, they, look, they bought into it. It was taxing, it was taxing in terms of, you know, the hours that we have to do. People were, it's yeah, tiring, yeah. you know, there was, there, was, there was overtime required to do, to do this. And uh, people were working extra hours to do this. Um, and that, that, that is the challenge, you know, if people became tired. Usually we get through the Christmas, you get a breath, you know, you come home and we plan again. But now we were asked to go again. And that was it. That's the challenge. So, and it's going to be tough because, you know, we don't know where the new volumes are going to be. And now we're going to go into the next peak. And yeah. so that, that is the challenge, you know, and it's, it's, it's to keep, keep the workforce, you know, engaged and motivated. And yeah. that is the big challenge. And maybe we can, maybe we'll wrap up with that question. Last question in from Stephen, which was like, how do you sustain that great momentum uh, achieved now? Um, and while taking care of the people at the same time, how do you, how do you um, look to sustain that going into the next Christmas, let's say, and Black Friday period as you're planning for it? Yeah, look, look, one of, one of the key things we're doing is we're, we're putting in another parcel automated machine. Uh, so look again that will reduce the, the handling of the product um, we're, we're going to add additional vans in like we are trying to get postal operatives off bicycles um, because that, that's, that's the wrong mechanism now for carrying the product um, so we need, to, we need to get additional vans in again we're, we're constantly looking at our buildings you know we're constantly looking at how we handle the product um, and it is it, it's just completely just constantly looking at the infrastructure how do we change the infrastructure? How do we even change working arrangements within, within the operation as well? And, yeah. um, you know, how do we look at Saturdays? How do we, how do we manage, you know, how do we put additional capacity in to meet the demand?